Hi, my name is Zachary Will. I'm here today with Riverside Studios, and today I'm going to be reviewing the JVC LS300. The JVC LS300 has quite a few features that really drew me into it. The features that really drew me in was like the 4K, um, it could shoot 422 50 megabits per second, HD, um, it had a log profile, JLog, um, had XLRs, ND filter, a good battery life, which turns out to be over three hours. Um, and it also has uh, 120 frames per second slow-mo and um, another cool feature of it is that it has this uh, sensor scaling mode um, which a lot of people are calling the prime zoom um, and what it does is it lets you zoom in on the sensor um, even in, while you're recording um, to fake a zoom um, and it allows you to get more reach out of your lenses um, without getting new lenses, which is really cool. It also lets you use some vintage lenses, um, for example, like 16 millimeter lenses or something like that. Of course, you have to do it in HD. This feature doesn't really, doesn't work in 4K, so. You know, there's a lot of weird things about the camera too. It has a lot of quirks. One of the quirks is that it has a quarter inch screw that's a little bit higher up in Side the camera and my one tripod plate didn't fit on it so I need to put a base plate underneath it and then attach the tripod plate to the base plate. It also has like an older like camcorder style um, and it's it's a little weird to shoot with it because I'm not used to holding the camera like this. I'm used to having the grip that's interchangeable too like on the C100 and a lot of cameras now, like the Ursa Mini, the FS5, FS7, a lot of those cameras have the, the side grip. Um, and so the camcorder feeling without being able to like rotate the grip feels really weird. Um, there's like a peaking mode and it changes the whole screen to monochrome and then you see the peaking and then when you turn the peaking off it goes back to color. Which is kind of weird for me. Um, I know a lot of older uh, videographers and camera operators use that, but um, it's just a little weird for me. The camera also takes a little bit to turn on. It takes like, I don't know, five to 10 seconds to turn on, which might not seem too much, but um, when you're in the field, it, it kind of gets annoying when you turn it on. Also, whenever you need to change the frame rate, it tends to take the same amount of time it does to turn on. So. Um, if you want to switch quickly from, you know, 24 to one, 120 frames per second, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll have to have a couple seconds there to kind of adjust. The fact that most people that I work with have never heard of the camera before um, also is kind of a downfall of the camera. Um, it means that people are less likely to work with you, they might not know the features, and they don't know what the image quality is going to turn out to be. So. A little bit more hesitant to let you use the JVC LS300. Also, the dynamic range didn't seem quite as great as um, my C100. Um, you know, it was fairly close, but the highlight roll off is a little bit harsh, I think. Um, and so that leads me to believe that, you know, they're both rated at 12 stops, but I think the, uh, the LS300 might have a little bit less. Um, the J-Log seemed to be uh, pretty good, but it was a little bit less flat than I would have liked. You know, but the color-wise, it seemed to be pretty similar to like a C-Log. 
Another awesome feature is the fact that the slow-mo actually has audio on it, which uh, is pretty rare for a camera like this. Um, one thing to mention is that it is a 50% crop when you go to 120 frames per second slow-mo. The build quality is also a little weird. Um, not, not so far as there's plenty of buttons and the buttons seem to work pretty well. Um, and all the features that I want to use are pretty accessible. Um, but the main thing that I have a problem with is uh, the screen. The screen takes a lot of um, force because um, it also has the joystick on there to control the menus and stuff. Um, and actually my, my screen, the joint on it broke. Um, and so I sent it back to JVC to get it repaired. We'll see how long that takes. Um, which is probably one of the biggest bummers of the of the video. Um, but the camera overall, I really like it. Um, you know, when I first picked it up, I was playing around with it. Um, wasn't too huge of a fan of it because um, it kind of felt a little outdated. But then, um, once I started reviewing the footage, um, shooting with it a little bit more outside, um, it turned into a camera that I really liked. Uh, the menus are also pretty easy to navigate. Um, one thing to note is that uh, the native ISO is 400 um, and only shows you DB levels. There's no option to show um, ISO. Um, and so zero DB in this camera equals uh, 400 ISO. Six is 800. 12 is 1600 and around 12 db it starts to get a little bit too noisy for me so overall it's an awesome like first attempt at a camera um, i think this is jvc's first like super 35 camera um, it has a lot of cool features um, there's a lot to like about the camera um, you just have to get over these little quirks the little quirks aren't gigantic things you know it's not like like battery life or um, overheating. Um, it's just little things like the uh, you know ISO sensitivity isn't super amazing, but it's still good. Um, so thanks for watching. This has been Zachary Will with Riverside Studios, and uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Signing out.